Hello, Mr. Sutton here with the Precal Honors 5.9 Extra Practice Number 1 Solutions on Quadratic Trigonometric Equations. To start this problem off, we're going to try to isolate the trig expression here, cosine. Now, we have to first isolate cosine squared, so we can do that by adding 3 and dividing by 8. So we've got, uh, let's see, 1 plus 3 is 4, divided by 8, we can reduce 4 over 8 to 1 half. And then to get cosine by itself instead of cosine squared, in this situation I can square root both sides of the equation. So that's going to give me both a positive and a negative root. Now the square root of 1 half, that's radical 1 over radical 2, which if I simplify the radical is radical 2 over 2. So we can say cosine equals positive root 2 over 2, and cosine of theta also could equal negative root 2 over 2. So these are two branches that we're going to have to solve independently of each other. Over here on the left side, uh, we notice that cosine has a positive value if it equals positive radical 2 over 2. So because cosine is the x values, this means that the angle from this branch of the solution is going to be to the right of the y-axis, so in quadrants 1 and 4. Let's get our first initial answer by taking the inverse cosine of both sides. You could do this on the calculator. Or you could remember that cosine of 45 degrees is radical 2 over 2. So inverse cosine of root 2 over 2 is the 45 degrees. Now this is a reference angle, so we can actually use this to find our quadrant 1 and 4 angles. Um, since we've got a reference angle, and actually 45 degrees is the quadrant 1 angle as well, so there's that. But since we've got this reference angle of 45, if we also want to get our quadrant 4 answer, that means that we have to be 45 degrees away from the x-axis in quadrant 4. So that's going to be 360 minus 45, taking us back into quadrant 4, and that's going to be 315 degrees. So that was one branch. Over here we have to do this other branch. Now before we do this, we recognize that cosine is negative for this part of the solution, which means that these angles coming from this branch are going to be to the left of the y-axis. So that would be quadrants 2 and 3. Let's get our uh, initial calculator angle by doing inverse cosine of both sides here. And I'll go to the calculator for this, although I, I kind of know what it is, but we'll show it on the calculator. So if we plug in this exact expression in the calculator, and I used a fancy fraction to do this here, press enter, and this should be in degrees now. This comes out to 135 degrees. Now we need to get a reference angle out of this. 135 is 45 degrees away from the x-axis, from the 180 line. So 45 degrees is our reference angle, if you subtract that from 180. So now we need answers in quadrants 2 and 3. For quadrant 2, we actually already have that answer. It's this 135 here. So there's no need to do anything fancy for that answer. For quadrant 3, however, we need to go 45 degrees away from the x-axis in the quadrant 3 direction. So we're starting at 180 and adding... 45 degrees to get into quadrant 3. That's going to give us 225 degrees. On this problem, I'm trying to solve for theta between 0 and 360. And this is extra tricky because we have two different types of trig functions. So if you're saying isolate the trig function, I mean, what does that even mean in this situation? But we kind of have a, an xy versus x sort of situation. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get everything on one side and see if factoring will allow us to kind of separate these different trig functions. So I'm going to actually add 2 secant theta sine of theta over to the right side, just so I don't have to deal with having a negative out in front. And at this point, now that I've got this all zeroed out, I'm going to do a little factoring. I notice both of these terms have a secant theta in them. So I'm going to factor secant theta out of that, which will leave me with radical 2 plus 2 sine of theta. All right, let me go ahead and set each of these terms or each of these factors equal to zero and solve. So we have secant of theta equals zero. And if we isolate sine from this parentheses, uh, we can subtract radical two from both sides, divide by two. We see that sine of theta has a value of negative root two over two. All right, let's do each of these uh, branches now independently. Over here, secant equals zero. Well, we can't really do much with secant. We always like to turn these uh, weird reciprocal trig functions into the original trig functions. So I can rewrite secant as cosine. It's reciprocal. But that means I have to take the reciprocal of the right side. And that's a little bit of an issue. Because if we write cosine of theta equals 
1 over 0, well, 1 over 0 is undefined. Um, so that means that we don't get any answers for theta from this branch. This is just a dead end. All right, well, that leaves this branch over here. So we need to do uh, inverse sine of negative root 2 over 2. Before we do that, though, let's see if we can anticipate where our answers are going to be in which quadrants. This is a negative value of sine. That means that sine, which represents the y value of the angle, is going to uh, give us angles that are below the x-axis, where we have negative y values. So that means we're looking in quadrants 3 and 4, the two quadrants below the x-axis. So let's go ahead and take sine inverse of negative root 2 over 2 to see what our initial answer is. So here we go, sine inverse, negative root 2 over 2. That's negative 45 degrees. So we need to get a reference angle, and uh, using that reference angle, we can figure out what the actual answers are in quadrants 3 and 4. This negative 45 degrees is not an answer. I mean, it's not even between 0 and 360, but it at least gets our foot in the door. So if we have a negative 45 degree angle, the reference angle on that, since you're 45 degrees away from the x-axis in the negative direction, your reference angle is also going to be 45 degrees. So now going to quadrant 3, to get a quadrant 3 version of this, we need to go 45 degrees from the x-axis into quadrant 3. So that means we need to do 180 plus 45, giving us 225 degrees. For quadrant 4, we have to go 45 degrees into quadrant 4, which means we need to start at 360 and go backwards 45 degrees, 360 minus 45, giving us 315 degrees. So we only end up actually getting two answers out of this. For this one, we're trying to figure out the value of theta between 0 and 360. Now, this one is just a big mess. We've got sines and sine squareds all over the place. But since I have a sine and a sine squared, I think to isolate the sine function, which is what we need to do first, we could treat this like a quadratic. Maybe if we can get everything on one side, we can factor this thing and do it that way. Um, so we don't have to do work too hard to get everything on one side. I'm just going to add this 5 sine squared over to the left side. So I'm going to rewrite the left side as 2 sine squared of theta plus 3 theta plus 1. All of that equals 0. And now we're just going to factor this. There really is only one way to factor this because we need 2 sine and sine of theta to give us 2 sine squared. And the only way to get positive 1 in a way that things are going to add up to a positive is if we have positive 1 and positive 1 being multiplied. So this can only be 2 sine of theta plus 1 times sine of theta plus 1. There's really no other possibility if you do the sine analysis. Okay, well, this means that sine of theta, if we set each of these equal to 0, sine of theta has a value of, let's see, minus 1 divided by 2, so negative 1 half, or sine would have a value of just negative 1 for the second parentheses. Going back to this first branch, since sine is negative, and that's the y value of the angle, that means our angles are below the x-axis, so quadrants 3 and 4. Sine inverse of negative 1 half is going to give us what? Well, this is the angle that would give you negative 1 half for the y value if you plugged it in. Now, you might recall that the sine of positive 30 gives you positive 1 half. Um, so we would need negative 30 then to get negative 1 half. You could do that on the calculator too, but, I mean, you can reason it out. So uh, that's not quite the angle we need. It's not between 0 and 360, but it's a step in the door. So let's now get the reference angle from this. If you're 30 below the x-axis, you're 30 away from the x-axis. So that's a reference angle of 30. For quadrant 3, we need to do 180 plus 30. Uh, basically go 30 past the x-axis to get into quadrant 3. That gives us 210 degrees. And then for quadrant 4, we're starting at 360 and walking backwards 30 degrees, away from the x-axis still. So 360 minus 30 gives us 330 degrees. All right, now for this other branch. There's only one place on the unit circle where sine takes on a value of negative 1. The only angle at which you have a y value of negative 1 is down at the bottom of the unit circle at 270 degrees. So no need for reference angles or anything else. We just get one answer out of that branch. On this problem, we're trying to solve for angles between 0 and 2 pi. So this has a lot of moving parts and a lot of things all over the place. I'm thinking let's just try to get everything over to one side 
and see if we can do some kind of factoring or some kind of algebra. So I do notice that we have a three cotan of theta on each side. If we subtract from both sides, those are going to cancel out nicely. And alongside that, I'm just going to move this radical three cotan of theta over to the left side. So we end up with three cotan of theta tan of theta minus root three cotan of theta equals zero. Again, those three cotan of thetas cancel each other out. And at this point, I notice that I have a cotan of theta in each of these terms. So that means I can factor cotan of theta out of here, leaving me with three tan of theta minus radical three inside the parentheses. Well, now we're talking. I can set each of these equal to zero and solve for theta. So uh, we can have a branch where cotan of theta equals zero. And if we solve this parentheses, we can add radical three, divide by three. We can say tan of theta equals root three over three. Let's take a look at this left branch here. Now we can't really operate too much with cotan. We typically in these situations use the reciprocal trig function. In this case, the reciprocal of cotangent is tangent. But if we take the reciprocal of the left side, we have to do it to the right side, which would give us, well, one over zero. Of course, that's undefined, so that's gonna be a, a big dead end that doesn't give us any solutions. So we go over here, tan of theta equals root three over three. First thing I'm gonna note is that this is a positive value for tangent. The slope of the angle is positive then. That means we are in quadrants one and three for our angles. So now let's do tan inverse of root three over three and see what that gives us for theta. So plugging that in, that's going to give us 30 degrees. 30 degrees is a reference angle, so that's going to help us out getting our quadrants 1 and 3 angles. And actually, uh, for quadrant 1, 30 degrees is also a quadrant 1 answer. So we can immediately use that as one of our answers. But now quadrant 3, we still need that one. So to get that one, we have to go 30 degrees into quadrant 3 away from the x-axis. So basically starting at 180 and adding another 30 degrees to take us a little further along that unit circle, that gets us to 210 degrees. Now we're not quite done because we needed radians for this answer. And although they said nearest tenth, you can also get the exact value by multiplying by uh, pi over 180. So if we do that with 30 degrees, 30 over 180, that's gonna give us one over six, so pi over six for that answer. And then 210, Reducing that with 180 with a pi on top, we're going to have, if we reduce it by 30s, we're going to have 7 pi over 6. So those are our two answers. On this problem, I'm trying to solve for theta with cosecant squared thrown in there. And I'll need my answers in radians. I'm going to start, though, by getting my answers in degrees. Then I'll convert. So let's start by isolating this squared trig function. If I add 5, that's going to give me a negative 4, and then divide by negative 1 to get positive 4, equaling cosecant squared. Square rooting both sides here, I get that cosecant of theta is going to be positive or negative 2. So this is going to give me two different branches to solve. Now, either way, cosecant by itself is kind of useless, so we're going to use the reciprocal of that sine to actually get some answers. So I can write sine equals the reciprocal of positive 2, um, so that would be 1 over 2. I can also write sine equals the reciprocal of negative 2, which is negative 1 over 2. All right, let's do these independently now. Uh, sine positive, that means that my y value of my angle is positive, so I'm above the x-axis in quadrants 1 and 2 for my answers. And the inverse sine of 1 half, well, the sine of 30 is 1 half, so sine inverse of 1 half is 30. And that's a reference angle, so I can use that to get my two angles pretty quickly. For quadrant one, 30 is also a quadrant one answer, so right off the bat we've got an answer. But for quadrant two, we have to go 30 degrees backwards from 180 into quadrant two, so 180 minus 30 is gonna give us 150 degrees for that angle. And we'll come back and turn these into radians in a little bit. Uh, let's do this other branch here. So sine negative means we're below the x-axis, so quadrants 3 and 4. And sine inverse of negative 1 half is just going to be the negative version of this, so negative 30 degrees. Reference angle on that, though, is still, interestingly enough, still 30. You're, you're 30 away. You're just in the negative instead of the positive direction. So for quadrant 3, we need to do 
180, but now instead of subtracting 30, we have to add 30 to go further along the path into quadrant 3. So that gives us 210 degrees. For quadrant 4, we're starting at 360 and going backwards 30 degrees. So that's 360 minus 30, giving us 330 degrees. Now we have to convert each of these into radians. 30, if you reduce that over 180, that's going to be pi over 6. And then 150, uh, that's going to be 5 pi over 6. 210 is another answer. That's 7 pi over 6. And then finally, 330, 11 pi over 6.